They say that one of the hardest things for people to do is to speak in public. As someone who does public speaking for a living, I can attest to the fact that it's not always easy to get up and speak in front of hundreds of people. It can be nerve-wracking, intimidating, it can give you sweaty palms or butterflies in your stomach. Over the last few weeks, however, I've learned that there's something even more difficult than speaking in front of a crowd, and that's speaking in front of no one at all. I now know better than I ever did before that I would rather speak in front of a large crowd any day before I have to speak to an empty church. Well, today I find myself preaching to an empty church. Father Michael is up here with me, and I'm very grateful for his presence, but the pews are empty. It's kind of eerie, probably just as eerie as it feels to you not to be here. Something just doesn't feel right. And yet, I know that Father Michael and I are not alone today. Our faith tells us that the angels and the saints of heaven are present at every Mass. And today we have the added bonus of knowing that we are joined by so many of you who are turning in today, tuning in today on the internet. Thank you all for joining us from a distance. We miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. And we cannot wait to see these pews filled with your beautiful faces again. In today's Gospel, we have the classic story of the raising of Lazarus. Lazarus dies and is already dead for four days when Jesus comes along and raises him from the dead. Lazarus is one of three people whom Jesus brings back from the dead in the Gospels. The other two are the daughter of Jairus and the son of the widow of Nain. There could be others, but these are the three that the Gospels tell us about. All three die a true physical death, and Jesus, by his divine power, brings all three of them back to life. Now let me ask you all an easy question. What future event is foreshadowed by the raising of these three people from the dead? What future event is foreshadowed by the raising of these three people from the dead? You probably know the answer. Father Michael, I hope you know the answer. But in case anybody needs a clue, I'll just say that we're going to commemorate that event just two weeks from today. Have you figured it out? If you were here, I know you'd be answering out loud. Well, if you guessed the resurrection of Jesus, you guessed correctly. Lazarus, the daughter of Jairus, and the son of the widow of Nain all died and rose from the dead, just like Jesus would soon do himself. And by doing so, they gave the people around them a little glimpse into what was about to take place in the life of Jesus between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Now here's something I want to ask you all to reflect on today. Lazarus, the daughter of Jairus, the son of the widow of Nain, all went through an experience of Jesus' death and resurrection in their own lives. In the same way, those of us who follow Jesus today also have to experience Jesus' death and resurrection in big ways and in little ways many times over the course of our lives. You see, there's a whole cycle of dying and rising built into our very lives. The most obvious example of this is physical death, when our bodies die and our souls are raised to eternal life. But before that big moment comes, we die and rise in so many other ways throughout our lives. We grieve at the deaths of people we love, only to then rejoice at the birth of new babies in our families. We go through failures in life, 
only to come back stronger and wiser and better prepared for new successes. We go through big disappointments, which so often are followed by great blessings. We get sick, and very often, though not always, we get healthy again. We go through moments of sadness and sorrow, followed by moments of joy, dying and rising, dying and rising. It's a cycle built right into nature. The world dies at winter and then rises again in spring. We die, in a sense, every night when we go to bed, and then we rise again in the morning to face a new day. Dying and rising. Dying and rising. Now, we Christians have a term for this cycle of dying and rising. You've all heard it before. The term is Paschal Mystery. Sometimes when you hear that term in church, it can kind of go in one ear and out the other. It sounds rather theological, rather sophisticated, like one of those terms only priests use. But if you're a Christian, the word Paschal and the word mystery are two words that ought to be in your everyday vocabulary. Every time you go through an experience of dying and rising in your life, you can rightly say, I'm going through the Paschal mystery right now. This past Tuesday, I had my monthly meeting with my spiritual director. We try to meet once a month. He's an elderly priest, and he's trying hard not to catch the virus, so we had to meet over the phone instead of in person. He asked me how I was handling all that's going on. I told him that I'm grateful to be healthy and I have so many good people around me checking in on me. But I also had to be honest and admit how difficult it's been for me not to have public masses, not to be in direct contact with my people, not to be able to visit my parents, and not to know when all of this is going to end. Now, my spiritual director is a man who is able to say a lot in a very few words. After I listed all the challenges I'm facing right now, he simply said to me, David, you're living the Paschal mystery. He didn't need to elaborate. I understood exactly what he meant. He was telling me, that in all of these difficulties, I am dying with Christ, but that I should be at peace, because after death always comes the resurrection. Well, right now, we're all living through the Paschal mystery, aren't we? In big ways and small ways, we're all experiencing the death of Jesus right now and looking forward to the resurrection, aren't we? The thousands of people who have lost their lives so far from the coronavirus have literally died with Christ and wait now to rise with him in their bodies at the end of time. They have lived the Paschal mystery. If you are grieving the sudden loss of a loved one due to this virus, then you are living the Paschal mystery. If you are one of the people who has gotten sick, You are living the Paschal mystery. If you are suffering economic hardship because of this crisis, if you have lost your job, or if your own business is starting to fail, you're living the Paschal mystery. If you're feeling isolated and alone right now because of the social distancing we're all practicing, you're living the Paschal mystery. If your plans for the next few weeks and months have all fallen through, if you're a bride or a groom and had to postpone your wedding, if you're a young person and you're crushed that your school play is off, or you no longer have the chance to play in that championship game, or your graduation or confirmation may now be postponed, then you are living the Paschal mystery. 
if you're suffering in fear and dread right now because you're afraid of catching the virus. And no matter how hard you try to get rid of those feelings, you just can't shake them. Then guess what? You're living the Paschal mystery. And if you're a first responder or a healthcare worker or a worker in some other essential business who has to leave the house every day and you're experiencing tensions with your family right now because they're afraid of you bringing something back into the house, then in that very tension, you are living the Paschal mystery. We are all going through the Paschal mystery right now. In some way or another, we are all dying with Jesus. And how appropriate that God is allowing us to go through this right before Easter. What we must remember at a time like this is that what we are going through right now is only the first part of the Paschal mystery. The second part is the resurrection, and it always comes. It may not come as fast as we want it to, but it always comes. So how are you being called to live out the first part of the Paschal mystery right now in your life? In what way are you being asked right now to go through what Lazarus went through and to die with Christ? As you think about your personal answer to that question, listen to the promise that God makes to all of us in today's first reading. He says, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Whatever may be the death that the Lord is asking of you right now, Accept it, embrace it, be patient with it, and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus throughout it. Before you know it, we will all be experiencing the second half of the Paschal Mystery. We will all be rising together with him to new life.